Okay, today we are doing neural stretching for your legs to help you with flexion. Now, I've been like this for a long part of my life with problems trying to be able to reach forward and touch your toes, like the flexibility issues through your legs. And it's been like that. You might be one of these people who, from maybe when you're 14 or 16, where you do a test like this and you can't touch your toes and you blame it on the hamstrings. Now, if you're like me, I've got, or I had, a long time in my life with a bit of a hypolodotic back, which gave me a lot of neural tension down my legs. Now, you could be someone who has problems going forward, and you'll know whether you've got neural tension or not, is you feel it sort of the back of your legs through the knee. So maybe a little bit of calf, a little bit of back of the knee, like there's a real tight sort of sticky point sort of a pain, a ropey point through there, and maybe even a little bit of the hamstrings. And you'll feel like when you bend forward, all you want to do is bend your knees, and then all of a sudden you can get further. Now, bending the knees, you know, you'll think, oh, is that my hamstrings? Most likely, it is your hamstrings holding on, which is part of the problem, but they're holding on because of the, how high your neural tension is from your spinal cord right through down to your feet. Now, there also could be someone who has perhaps had a disc problem, had a discectomy, had a disc bulge, a herniation, has had sciatica before, and is now really struggling with trying to go forward. And that may be, of course, with a bit of guarding from the lower back. But if it's chronic, long term, the fact that you've had you know, a disc problem, and now you sort of can't go forward, you're sort of stuck there, you feel really tight through here, it's probably because you still have the remnants of neural tension from the disc problem beforehand. So just a note, this is not for people with sciatica. Okay, so if you've got a current acute disc bulge and you've been told maybe not to bend forward for a while and you're focusing on your extension, this is not for you. So if you've got someone who has sciatica, it's not for them. All right, this is for chronic long-term stiffness in the back of the legs that stops you going forward. And the reason why we want to get you going forward and being able to touch your toes is to help you with deadlift movement, help you with your squat movement, so you're less stiff through the back of your legs and your movement is better and you don't get any problems after exercise. So there is two things I'm going to get you working on to start with. One is a sciatic nerve floss and rotation and the other one is sort of in a long sitting position. Let me show you the rotation one first. Now what you should do first though is test your flexion to show you this is working, okay? So straight knees, going forward, try and round your back, see how far you go. And remember the symptoms are sort of almost pain, but tightness pain through in a very generalized area, okay? All around down the back of your legs. Test out how far you go. Can you get to knees, is it half shin? How far can you go? Everyone's a little bit different, but I would do this one leg at a time, and what you'll need is not necessarily a pole, but you'll need something fixed that is not going to move, like a wall or a pole or something in the gym maybe that you can put your foot on to stretch against. Now, to start yourself off, if you look at where your hips are, I want your hips in line of where your foot's going to be. Okay, so you sort of work out where your foot's going to be, hips are going to be in line. Then what you have to work out is how far away from the wall you're going to be. So one leg goes straight, which is the closest one, the other leg is going to go over all the way to the wall. Now what I want you is sort of basically, if you can, get level with your leg. Right? So what you may do is you go, okay, my knee's really bent, I need to shuffle back a little bit. And you might have to readjust this a few times to get the right or exact position of where you need to be relative to the wall. So what I want you to start off with is when your toe is touching the wall, not your heel, but your toe, is touching the wall or the pole, your knee is in a little bit of a bent position, like say maybe 30 degrees. So you should, in this position, if you've got this tight neural tension, should feel it already a bit. Not as much as when you've been forward, but just feeling a bit, and you'll probably feel a little bit through your hip as well because you're in that rotated sort of stretch position in your glute, so that will, you'll feel it here, and that's fine. So, just a side note, this should not cause any sciatica, okay? So if you're getting sciatica with this sort of problem, or you're getting sharp pains, or pains through your back, this is not for you, all right? So just a little disclaimer there. So when you do this, make sure you're not getting any back pain. It should only be the same symptoms as you get when you bend forward, all right? Now from here, this is the movement. What I'm gonna try and do is push that knee straight and then back it off. 
So I'm going from a tiny little bit of tension here to quite a lot and almost pain and back. But it's a stretch pain. It's not a tearing or an injury pain. It's a stretch pain. And you just simply go on and off. Now some people might find that a little bit hard. Once you get used to it, you'll be able to learn how to push it a little bit harder. If you need assistance, this is what this hand's for. So you can relax your upper body. This hand can then push. So you push with your heel. So the heel is going towards, say, the wall, and then you add on the hand, bring that pain on, and back it off. Okay, so it's pain on, pain off, or stretch pain on, stretch pain off, just like that. And I'd aim for about 10 reps. Until you get good at it, you could maybe do 30 in a row, but I'd do 10, and then do 10 on the other side. So just work on that. And again, shouldn't be any pinching here. You'll just be a stretch here, no pain here, just a stretch there. And if anything, it'll make it sort of feel a bit warm. And then as soon as you stop, it completely goes away. All right? Then you just flip around and do the same thing on the other side. Set yourself up in the same position. Come in here, roll it over. Try and get your position right. Nice and straight through here. Arms out. Get your foot in the right position. And away you go. Straighten it. Push it on. Bring that horrible pain on. It's like I call, I call it horrible pain. Bring it on, bring it off. But it's really actually good pain and just try and work on trying to get your sciatic nerve distribution, the whole thing, all the way down, when it splits off through the knee, into the foot, loosened up. Now you're not stretching a nerve, we're not lengthening it, we're trying to mobilize it. Now this is a form of flossing, okay? You're trying to drag it through the tissues and then drag it back, drag it through the tissues, let it go. So think of like if you had a bit of dental floss, you're trying to pull it from one end and then let it come back. Pull it from one end, let it come back. And that's the way you're going to loosen up your neural system is by actually mobilizing it, not actually lengthening it. You can't really lengthen it like a muscle. So you don't sit there holding it because it'll go pins and needles and it doesn't lengthen out anyway. So this mobilization is what's going to free it up. The more you move it through the tissues, you will find that when you stand up, maybe you've done three sets of ten of that, the increased sort of flexibility, which is the increased mobility of that neural tissue, will mean your hamstrings don't guard as much. So when you go down, you will find the hamstrings let go, and all of a sudden, hey, I've got another sort of three or four inches of movement there, okay? And that's what you're after. You're after the hamstrings letting go. We didn't go and stretch your hamstrings out, okay? We mobilized the neural tissue, and all of a sudden, hey, presto, you can go forward. Try that yourself and see, prove to yourself whether that works or not for you. And of course, you want to be feeling better after. So don't go too gung-ho with this because people can get sort of carried away with this and then start getting a little bit sore through there. So you just need to be to the point where you're feeling it when you're doing it, but then you're feeling less when you get up. And that is going to make all your movement into a squat and a deadlift and a run and on, on the cycle, whatever you're going to do sport-wise, easier. Okay, you won't be as stiff and as tight through here, especially it also loosens up the back. So you may find your lower back is less stiff as well because you've been working on neural tissue. Remember that goes all the way up into your lower back and into your spinal cord. So you, the fact that you've loosened this off, you'll probably find that this, if you've got tightness in your lower back, that backs off as well. All right, so that's your first one. And that's sort of so you can do it either side, one side at a time and work on you know, trying to get that a little bit better. Then you try and finish it off with a double leg. Now what I would do with a double leg one is get into a position where you're sort of long sitting, all right? So this position here, you need to bend your knees. We're not trying to aim for a straight leg, okay? Because you've got high neural tension. You won't be able to handle that. So you bend your knees off. And this way, now we can do our flossing with sort of both ways. When, what I like to do is, if I just go back to this one, when I was doing the rotation one, my back was basically straight, okay, and I was doing, so I could afford to go and pull the nerve one way. When I flex my back as well, I'm increasing more tension through my spinal cord, so I actually want to decrease the amount of stretch through the calf when I do that, and then as you've got that sort of flossing, meaning when I bend forward, I need to plantar flex my feet to take the tension off there. Because if I just bend forward and just try and stretch like that, it's just a whole massive wind up. And that may make you sore, especially if you've got a high neural tension sort of body type. So what I would tend to do is instead of holding that and just trying to go down like this, what you do is you hold on to your feet and at that position you'll feel that tension the same as when you did rotating. And you plantar flex 
your feet. So you push, you use your calves to push, and because I'm connected with my hands, that pulls me into lumbar flexion, and then I can go into cervical flexion as well, and then when I come off, I come up. All right. So think of when I go into lumbar flexion, you go into plantar flexion. So plantar flexion and lumbar flexion happen at the same time, and a bit of cervical if you want to, and then you go and extend and dorsiflex. And then if you think about the sciatic nerve that comes through the calves, okay, up the tibial and then sciatic through the legs, into your back, into your spinal cord, up into your back of your head, it's moving all together, okay? You're not stretching it out all the way through your neural system, which is gonna to be too much. You're actually moving it back and forth. Now that you'll find, you start working on this one and you can be, you get really clever at how much you need to push and then move. And then when you come back, to try and keep that tension almost relatively the same all the way through. So I'm not increasing or decreasing really how much tension I've got through it. I'm sort of keeping it the same. If I just went like here and just went down, of course that increases. But because of plantar flex, it doesn't really increase. So keeping that neural tension, that's one thing you've got to try and sort of try and remember, is try and keep the tension the same all the way through. And so you know that you're sort of keeping the dental floss tight as you go forward and back. I hope that makes sense. That one will be really effective to then, when you go back into your test of flexion and going forward, you'll probably find, oh my goodness, there's another two inches there. Okay, and your back really releases that. But all these things, because they're neural and you've had maybe, you're one of these like me, you've had a long time of your body guarding and holding on, you can't just loosen up in one day. All right, this is going to take you a long period of time. And it'll be frustrating because you'll do one day and you feel great, you wake up the next day and you go, oh, it's all tight again. That's normal. But over time, as your body gets loose to sort of relaxing those tissues and you stop tightening up and your posture slowly maybe changes for the better, then you'll find that it gets less and less and less stiff each day and gets to the point where it's loosened up, if you like, and those stretches you don't need to do as much. But be careful. Doing too much too soon can make you sore. And the other disclaimer was, if you have a current acute disc bulge herniation problem, had just had back surgery, you have sciatica pain, this is not the one for you. This is for when you've recovered from that and you've left with that neural tension problem where you just stiff down the back of your legs and it's affecting the way you move. I hope that helps. See you next time.